Hello everyone, it's your boy TGV1, we're back with the first video that we have. Alright, so what I said last time is what we're going to learn how to export and render a character in Roblox. So, let's start off with what you need to get first. What I think is the easiest is to have... Um, Google Chrome downloaded with an extender which is called um, asset downloader I'm pretty sure but I will make sure it's what it is so we go click on extensions and as you see click asset downloader Roblox and the way you can find that is usually if you type in web store and Google Chrome it will pop right up and you can just click web store and type in Roblox asset downloader but first make sure to make it easier just click extensions then type in Roblox asset downloader and you see it's right there first one and from there you want to choose someone or it's usually a person that you can always choose from so for example i'm just gonna go to a group real quick and just select this person since i really don't have an order to do <laughs> and what you do is wait for the page to load since that's what it takes and we go into we click on the roblox asset downloader like image it's right there this is to take the texture from the person. This is just going straight in a studio or if you want to just stay, save as a file, put it on a USB and then go to a friend's house and show them, oh look, I got the model of you and everything. Or you can just do, do the same exact thing with the second one. So what you want to do is double click that. And oh, yeah, I actually want click works. <laughs> all right so we click one of the players you don't want to click all of them like i did because that was dumb and what you want to do from this point on is position the character like if you're a graph designer and got some details like how they want positioned or what they want with that character you can just easily um what's it called easily just position it for them and then send them screenshots of how it looks like and if they like it or not if they don't then <laughs> and that means you got some work to do uh, from this point on if it ever opens yeah it's opening from that point on you're gonna export it so since I'm using cinema both Blender and Cinema both take OBJ files, so that's the great part about Roblox Studio. It doesn't like make a different file like with OBJ and stuff. <laughs> All right, so while well, this loads, I'll be right back while this loads. So. All right, so we're back finally and usually if they have like a gear it'll spawn on the left side or the right side depending on which arm it goes through and what you want to do you can use it if you want to if it's a welcome to my thumbnail like profile thumbnail you can use it and ask them if they want it or not so for now it's not i don't need it necessarily so maybe next time i'll show you guys what to do with like a model or like a character doesn't like have their textures so like for example a brick doesn't usually have a texture so it's just gonna be a brick so i'm gonna show you maybe i don't know i can't tell since the future is not <laughs> looking so bright right now but you know this is from this point on it's c frame and what you want to do is just get like better at it every day just just try what you can do and from that point on just 
use this C frame rotation. I mean, except the scale. You don't need to use the scale. <laughs> I made that obvious. Captain Obvious right here. Then what I usually do is make sure it looks like realistic, you know, how it's in game. You know how in game your character like shifts with the arms and everything? They usually wanna just take the arm and just slightly bend it on both arms so it looks realistic as possible. And from that point on, you want to click on player, but don't double click, just click it once. <laughs> right click, export selection. And since this is a tutorial, I'm going to name it tutorial and place it on my desktop. But it's preferably to go into a folder that you, you can keep track of all the exports since it doesn't, it's going to look like a mess on your desktop. I, I remember, I don't know if I have an image of it, like back then when I had an old laptop, the laptop was just covered. So the, see that Cinema 40R14 Studio, that's where I place everything for Roblox and for YouTube, it's different right now. And so we're going to name this tutorial. And now, unless you want to make changes and if you don't like it in the studio, you can close out of um, Roblox Studio. So right click or click X up and like it's easier doing this. But if you want to like save the changes so you can come back later to it, you can. But for this tutorial, I don't need to. So I might just hit no for now. So now we're gonna hop into Cinema 4D R14 Studio. Since Studio, I prefer Studio. Like there's other versions, but I prefer that. What you wanna do first is try like, I'll show you one day. Actually, that's gonna be the next video, how to make your own Lightroom. Since people ask me how your rendering looks so good as well. and how do you get shadows as well in your on your characters? So that's what I'm gonna do next time for you guys. It's gonna be like a quick video, nothing special, just quick. And you know, just open up that. Make sure you save like, for example, how I did it. I saved the character. So in case, in now I have the head like a a stand, so I can like place the current Roblox scene where I'm going to render. So I'm going to go find tutorial OBJ one, this one. We click it once and open or you can double click up to you. And from this point on, you want to have your character like lighting look best as possible. And I'm putting it up here since uh, my past renders were used to be to the ground, and I noticed like a little bit shadow on the bottom, and I'd have to crop out like things underneath it, like the shadow itself. So I just raised it a bit so I don't have to do that anymore. It makes it easier on me and for the customer I'm making this like stuff for. <clears throat> and now, usually the texture down here corresponds it'll tell you the MTL and what the file is usually it corresponds with it but if for some case it doesn't appear that means um, you just need to fix it real quick and just reopen it so I found my file open it and as you saw earlier you want to uncheck speculate because that's that's like presetted to be checked you want to uncheck that since it's not going to look good. But unless you want to leave it, you can. You can do that for sure. And up here, we got the three main buttons, which are these. This one is the render, where you can just see how it would look like. This is your final render, which is where you make the final product. This, these are your settings. And the this button right here is the like move around button like you can just like from this point on you can just move around left to right up and down but this is the zoom 
out and zoom in. This is to rotate left, right, up, down. And this, I would not recommend clicking because it just brings you up to four tabs. But if that does ever happen, just click it again. It will bring you right back to your previous state. So the settings I use for the character is 1980 by 1080. And from that point on, I go on to save. I save this. Uh, I'm going to save this on my desktop again. So I'm going to save this as tutorial. I'm going to save it as that. Make sure it's PNG, 8-bit channel, alpha channel, 8-bit, different, include sound. I don't know why you need that. But then from ambient occlusion, I put this so it looks better. And then global illumination, general, 100% one, one, and IR sampling low. I could make this higher. Let's try high for this tutorial. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna just go back to low. And from that point on, it's low, least square. I mean, you can pause the video. I'm just going through it so you guys don't just get confused. So I'm gonna render this and I wanna see if it looks good with high. If not, I'm gonna go back to low. Huh, that looks pretty good. I'd say so, it looks pretty good. So I'm going rot to rotate this camera a bit, and I'm going to keep it. Actually, no, no. I'm going to see what the difference is between low and high, so we don't have to go through a lot of jibber-jab. So usually this, this will take like a couple minutes for some people with slow computers. If it does, um... Just try, you know, erase some programs that you don't need. But I think it looks about the same. So I'm going to just keep it like this. And then I'm going to render. Um, while this renders, I'm going to be AFK or BRB. Since this is going to take like a couple, two or three minutes. So I'll be back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back again. And as you see, this final image will have a white background. But beware, once you open it in Photoshop, which I'll be using uh, the video after the next one, I will be showing you what to do since I will show you like currently what it looks like when you double click it. Because when you double click it, it looks way, uh, like completely different from the original photo, like the image. And if this loads, all right, you see, it looks completely different since right above the hat, it was a, a white background. Now it's not. So that means we did it right. We did it right. So from that point on, we got next video for sure is going to be how to make your own Lightroom in Cinema 4D R14 Studio. And if you guys are ever... Like soon I'll be doing a, like some giveaways for my Lightroom personally and then for some you know thumbnail templates so you guys can just customize it however you want to or add templates so like if you guys just help me support me and you know give me some likes that'd be great subscribe and you know from this point on <laughs> it's been tgv1 and i'm out thank you for watching